such a beautiful film, such an amazing accomplishment for all of you. Um, why do you think it was time to tell Oppenheimer's story on this really large scale? Well, I don't know if, uh, if it was um, about that it was time. I think it was just that Chris had been, I asked him recently, I'd never asked him this during the shoot, but I said, why did you want to write it? And he said he was really taken with the idea that there was a close to zero chance that they would blow up the world, but not a zero chance. That when they, when, they, when they did the Trinity test, it was close to zero, but not fully zero. And I think he said, what's that conversation like? What, what does that look like? What's that decision to potentially destroy the world in order to try and save it? And he just thought the theme was so huge. And yeah. that, was, that was why he wrote it. It really, really is when you think about it like that. Um, Emily, you play this nonconformist 1950s housewife. You were so good in this oh, role. Thank you. Great. So good. Thank you. Um, I wonder, did you? How did you relate to her? I mean, I. She parents in a similar <laughs> way. <laughs> no, Kitty is not a natural nurturer. We can say that. Not the best mummy. Um, so probably not meant to be a mother. You know, I guess I yes. had empathy for that. Yes. You know, this is a woman who was meant for, you know, exciting intellectual endeavors. She was a scientist and she was a nonconformist. She didn't want to contort herself into the 1950s feminine ideal and thus got the reputation as not being terribly nice, you know, but I bet she was not happy a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And I had empathy for that. Someone who went to waste at the ironing board. I thought mm. that was a very complicated character. And she was fiery. She was a mm. huge presence in his life and a huge supporter of him. Yeah. Yeah, I loved playing her. I loved watching it. Good. Uh, Matt, you, we've seen you in military, military roles before. This one, I really loved how you were so intense at times. But then you did bring a lot of levity. I don't know if you meant, I don't know if that was intentional. Yeah, no, it's my that's, interpretation. I think it was just the, a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of did all the talking. I just let my mustache, the Leslie. <laughs> the Leslie. Um, no, I, there's nothing unintentional in, in Chris's movie. We talked about Groves being uh, accessible, mm -hmm. like, a, like, you know, to give the audience some access and, 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 and a laugh or two. And, um, but, you know, that relationship was very well documented and, and um, you know, there was a, this natural tension between the military and the scientists because the military is all need to know and compartmentalization and the scientists take the opposite approach, which is, you know, share all your information so we can get to the truth. And so, uh, so it was, it was a really fun, you know, it was really fun to play because there was this natural tension. Um, and probably his first experience with like a theoretical world as opposed to a need to know world, you know, it must have been, yeah. right. Groves hadn't come across that sort of world before as well, which no, was and like I think baffling to him. It was so yeah, cool he was how you baffled by the science. Yeah, it was so did. funny how you showed yeah. it. You totally did. And it, it had me going like, because it's so intense. You need kind of like that <sighs> breath. Yeah, you well, bring that. When you that, think of too. what's at stake too, right? Yes. Like it's incredible how consequential this was, right? This it's is true. the biggest thing to happen in the 20th century. And he's trying to run this project and, and you know, and with this fear that, that there's espionage, that there's, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the scientists were suspected communists or pretend, you know, they had been to meetings because, you know, earlier on, you know, uh, with, with Franco in Spain, a lot of them were sending money to the, right. to the rebels. And it was like, you know, to fight fat, they were anti-fascist, but... And for um, him, is so untrusting of it all. Right, his like, job I mean, is to not trust anybody. Yes. To just yes. assume that everybody is a spy yeah. and everybody's trying to get this information. And then, obviously, if it falls into the wrong hands, that would be cataclysmic. So yeah. there was a lot at stake. Right. Um, I loved that you guys did this film together because I know you are neighbors. <laughs> you are friends. You yeah. go way back. Did you meet on the Adjustment Bureau? Yeah. Yes, yeah. We yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> Uh, yes, right. we Sometimes did. we just see each other across the street and we go like that. Um, yes, That's like what did. fans uh, want to hear. Oh, so thank yeah. you for exactly. saying that. People are clamoring for Adjustment Bureau too. <laughs> you know, just crying out for it. Stop it. Yeah. I enjoyed that film very much so. So in the sequel, I'm going to be wearing the fedora and he's going to be dancing. It's going to be great. Well, we can't wait it's for gonna, it. Oh, it's going to be huge. Do you remember your first impressions of each other back then? He was so nice to me. I auditioned for it, and I know he'd seen like four other chicks that day. Yeah. 
and he was so lovely and fun, and we improved a lot, and it was really cool. Yeah, you just came in and slaughtered the audition. Don't so say it was that. Like, you did. You crushed. <laughs> no, everybody did. They were all excellent, and uh, but you were just definitely the reason to make Thank the movie. You. Oh, you know. and now do you double D? Are you yeah. asking for milk time. from each other? We literally do. <laughs> yeah. We literally ask for milk. Or tequila. Or tequila. <laughs> or tequila. Or tequila. My yes. preference. So yes. I love There was that. actually a funny story because when Chris came to, to um, talk to me about the movie, he bumped into John in the lobby and he already knew that he was going to go to Emily but he didn't want to do it on the same day because he didn't want it to seem like he was going to just one apartment building <laughs> to cast his movie. He didn't want. He just thought, he thought it would be offensive to me if it seemed like convenient casting. You know that he was like, "Oh, while well, I'm here." Like, while I'm here. So funny. Yeah. So, but he knew that the cast that he wanted, but he didn't want to. Uh, everyone in the elevator. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're going to Los Alamos. We're gonna go knock on doors and <laughs> yeah, cast the rest of this movie. I love it. Uh, and finally, Killian is obviously so incredible in this incredible. role. Incredible. I mean, have you guys seen the movie yet? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you know. I mean, oh my God. Oh he's my God. incredible. And by the way, that's by like design, like Chris knew the whole time he said, I'm going to call it Oppenheimer. I'm not going to call it American Prometheus, which is the name of the book, because it's so important that it's really this guy's subjective experience. The whole movie, he said, is going to ride with Killian. Yeah. Like, and so he goes, I'm putting he's this so entire thing on his back. Like mesmerizing. And it was a monumental task to take on. Like, I don't know how he retained that the storm of this movie for know. so long, and he's mesmerizing. Yeah. Like what he was able to play in the duality of that character in every moment, it's so exciting. It's, a, it's an so happy awesome for performance. Him. Yeah, it is like it is, it's it is awesome. as good as they come. One of the greats of all time. I couldn't agree more. You guys yeah. are all fantastic. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for your time. Thank I love you. you both. I'm such a fan of both of you. Thank it's you. Such a pleasure for me. You Adjustment too. Bureau too. Come, come on. Oh, we'll be fine. Here we go. <laughs>